just remind us of, of how you realised that, that something wasn't right with your husband. Um, Les uh, developed this smell when he was just coming up for 32 and I kept saying to him, you're not showering properly. And uh, he became quite angry about it at first. Um, but I decided, well, we have to live with it, that's it, and didn't think much of it. And it would come and go, but it was getting stronger and stronger. Um, and various other things uh, happened. Uh, he was a bit more tired, uh, grumpy, and I thought he had a brain tumour. So when he was 44, um, he went uh, to Salford and uh, was diagnosed by uh, Alistair Young. And had you ever, had you realised that, that you had this sort of olfactory sense that, that you, you could smell things that perhaps other people couldn't? Yes, I did, because my grandmother had it. It's, it's hereditary. Um, my two sisters have it as well, uh, but they didn't do nursing. Um, I nursed, at 72, I nursed in Nightingale wards, uh, beds close together, open sputum mugs, uh, metal bedpans that we had to wash. So I acquired this olfactory library. Now, what was the reaction of the medical establishment to the fact that you, that you you said, well, you know, I knew that he had something wrong with him. He smelled, he smelled different for 12 years. Well, I didn't go to the medical fraternity. Um, Les decided, because he he was a, had been a consultant in Aesthetics, he decided we had to find a researcher, a scientist. And Dr Tilo Kunath at Edinburgh University was doing a lecture. So I turned up, um, I stood up at the end when he asked for questions, and I asked, why are you not using the smell of Parkinson's to diagnose it earlier? Um, I wish I'd had a, a camera to take a picture of Tilo's face, because we're very good friends now. But he didn't understand what I was asking. He asked me to repeat the question and he said, oh, well, let's speak about it afterwards. But it was quite a few months before he contacted me again because he'd been at a, a dinner and uh, this researcher in, in cancer had said to him, look, find that woman. And he found me through Parkinson's UK. And how have we now got from that point to the point where there is actually now a swab test that can be done? This is this is seven years now. Um, I have to oh, commend the the Barn Group at Manchester. They've tested, retested. They have done everything possible to make sure it it has been in you new know, swabs in a freezer outside on a desk, and they have done every possibility and retested many times to make sure that this is perfect. So now a machine is doing the job that essentially your nasal passages have been able to do all of this time, and, and your family's also. What does this mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, I hope it means that um, uh, Parkinson's is now diagnosed with over 50% of neuronal damage. I am very much hoping that an early diagnosis can prevent it getting to the neuronal damage. It will be diagnosed when the constipation and loss of smell, etc., is there and prevent the disease progressing any further. So it could really help uh, the symptoms for, for those in the earlier stages of Parkinson and, and, and help ease the rest of their time? Yes, very much so. It would, uh, I, and that depends. We would like to work with uh, pharma as well to make sure their um, uh, drugs work because we can measure the volatiles as people are treated. Um, so, yes, and Perdi is also, Professor Padita Barn is also looking at um, the uh, progression in uh, Parkinson's to see whether they can measure it through this, uh, the volatiles. It's a fantastic legacy. Uh, Joy, Joy Milne, lovely to talk to you and thanks a lot for explaining a bit more about it today. Thank you.